This animation depicts the surface view of a target cell and its interaction with a peptide hormone as a model to demonstrate G-protein coupled signal transduction in cells. Peptide hormones generally consist of short chains of amino acids. Because peptide hormones are often quite short, they lack a rigid three-dimensional conformation and are flexible. Peptide hormones are usually water-soluble and too large to pass through the lipid plasma membrane of their target cells. Therefore, peptide hormones interact with a cell surface receptor that has an exposed extracellular hormonal binding site. The peptide hormone fits into the receptor like a key fits into a lock, and the hormonal message is conveyed to the receptor. The activated receptor then undergoes a conformational change that transfers the hormonal message into the cell. Once inside the cell, the message is converted, or transduced, into unique chemicals referred to as second messengers. The intracellular second messengers control the cellular biochemistry to determine how the cell should respond to the hormone. In this example, the hormone stimulates the target cell to open a membrane cation channel. When the channel opens, cations enter the cell and cause a localized depolarization that spreads over an area of the cell surface. In this model, the localized depolarization of the cell membrane represents the target cell response to the hormonal message. Finally, we fade into a view of the internal organization of the target cell that shows the peptide hormone receptor and its chemicals for converting the hormone message into the intracellular second messengers. This scene will show the details of how a target cell converts an external hormonal message into internal second messengers that produce a cellular response. The hormone receptor is a protein that has seven hydrophobic transmembrane spanning regions that project through the cell's plasma membrane. The receptor is associated with a G protein that is comprised of alpha, beta, and gamma subunits. The peptide hormone assumes its active configuration, fits onto the receptor binding site, and conveys its message. The message results in a conformational change in the receptor that is transferred mechanically to the G protein. Mechanical activation of the G protein results in the alpha subunit replacing guanosine diphosphate with guanosine triphosphate. The activated alpha subunit separates from the beta and gamma subunits and migrates within the plasma membrane to an inactive phospholipase C enzyme. Energy captured from the hydrolysis of the terminal phosphate of guanosine triphosphate is transferred through the alpha subunit to activate the phospholipase C. The process of activating the phospholipase C converts the guanosine triphosphate back to guanosine diphosphate and the alpha subunit rejoins the beta and gamma subunits to reform the inactive G protein. Activated phospholipase C degrades phospholipids that make up the plasma membrane to produce two second messengers, inositol 145 trisphosphate and diacylglycerol. The inositol 145 trisphosphate is released from the membrane and binds to a receptor on the endoplasmic reticulum. This intracellular signal results in the release of calcium stored within the endoplasmic reticulum. The released calcium plus the diacylglycerol from the membrane activate an inactive protein kinase enzyme in the plasma membrane. The previous scene demonstrated how second messengers transfer the primary message from the hormone to activate an enzyme that will produce a physiological response in the target cell.
Activated protein kinase from the previous scene facilitates the transfer of a high-energy phosphate group from adenosine triphosphate to an inactive cation channel protein. Phosphorylation of the cation channel protein activates the channel protein and causes opening of the cation channel. Opening the cation channel allows extracellular cations, such as sodium, to enter the cell. The diffusion of sodium into the cell results in a localized depolarization of the cell membrane in the region of the channel. The depolarization spreads across an area of the cell surface. Since this is only a hypothetical model to explain G-protein signaling, the depolarization is presumed to produce an important physiological response within the target cell or to signal other cells. G-protein coupled receptors are involved in numerous physiological actions including sensory responses to light and chemicals, as well as responding to peptide hormones and other signaling chemicals such as neurotransmitters that convey extracellular information. Because of their widespread use by cells for signal transduction, G-protein coupled receptors are important targets in the development of new pharmaceuticals for medical treatments.